we have the unusual tale of a legendary lawman in a small town of South Dakota where fact, fantasy, and history have come together to tease the imagination. It all began more than a century ago. In the late 1870s, South Dakota was booming with gold fever, attracting outlaws, gamblers, and swindlers. Mining towns dotted the landscape. Perhaps the most infamous was Deadwood. It was here that Wild Bill Hickok was shot to death, and Calamity Jane practiced her trade in a house of ill repute. It was a wild and woolly town. The miners just absolutely were raising hell in this town. Most towns are 95% solid citizens and 5% characters. In Deadwood, the reverse is true. Finally, in the summer of 1876, a call went out for a man who could bring law and order to the community. The call was answered by Seth Bullock, who had come into town from Montana a few months earlier. He became Deadwood's first sheriff. Sheriff Bullock took his cleanup campaign throughout the territory. One afternoon in 1887, he encountered three men whom he took at first glance to be cattle rustlers. What the hell's going on here? What are you boys doing in these parts? We're looking for a horse thief. What's your name? My name's Theodore Roosevelt, and I'm the deputy sheriff of Billings County. Sheriff Bullock and Theodore Roosevelt went on to become the best of friends. When Roosevelt formed the Rough Riders, Seth joined up. Teddy, of course, would later be elected president, and in 1905, Seth was an honored guest at the inauguration. But even in Deadwood, not many people knew that when President Roosevelt died in 1919, the sheriff arranged to have this memorial called the Friendship Tower, erected just outside of town. Nine months later, Seth Bullock himself passed away and was buried at a gravesite overlooking the monument. In April of 1991, 5,000 miles away in Dorset, England, a man who claimed to be a psychic said he began receiving messages from beyond the grave. By pure coincidence, the psychic's name was Sandy Bullock. Occasionally, various people pop through, and the name Seth Bullock, I thought perhaps it was an ancestor that was coming through to say hello or something like that, um, and I rather dismissed it. Sandy claims that Seth communicated with him through a Native American guide who issued a warning to the people of Deadwood. A period of lawlessness loomed on the horizon. Sandy immediately wrote an open letter to the proprietors of the Bullock Hotel. I thought if I write to someone in this place called Deadwood, they'll just think I'm a nutty old Englishman and forget it, throw it away. A few weeks later, Sandy's letter arrived at the Bullock Hotel. The Bullock Hotel, founded by Seth in 1895, has been revitalized. Local journalist Rena Webb was intrigued and decided to write back to Sandy Bullock. And in this letter, I said to him, I am categorized, I suppose, neither as a believer or a non-believer. I will treat your story with the utmost respect. However, I have a lot of readers who will be totally skeptical about your story. Because of the skepticism, I would like to pose to you a test question. Who was the well-known person who was a close friend of Seth Bullock's? And how is Bullock's grave positioned in relation to that friendship? When I got his letter in response to my test question, he said, Tall trees block the view from his old bones, but Teddy and he still meet in the afterlife. And I said, whoa. <laughs> and I still get goose pimples when I think about that. 
it was a story that was not well known. And I, I, and there was no way Sandy Bullock sitting in Dorset, England could have researched this. I mean, it's just not possible. All I know is the evidence seems to point very strongly in the direction of Sheriff Seth Bullock still being on the job in Deadwood, South Dakota today. If you've got a situation where people claim that they've got some kind of ghost, they don't actually pay any attention to what I say whatsoever. They listen to the psychic. She was the star of the show, and then to a lesser extent, the paranormal investigator, because they want it to be a ghost. They don't want somebody taking all this excitement. They don't want somebody taking that away from them. There is a definite psychological profile that tends to go with belief, and it includes things like the tendency to have a very overactive imagination, to be fantasy prone, to experience dissociative states. Now about Seth Bullock's dire prediction, we just have to wait and see. Curiously, in 1993, there are plans to raise the gambling stakes from the present $5 limit. Now some fear this will introduce a new criminal element in Deadwood. Perhaps that is what prompted old Seth's urgent warnings. Yeah. Brought to you by the oxygen people. Breathe in, breathe out.